Hi everyone and welcome to today's SQL Office Hours session. Today um, we're going to be looking at ages and birthdays and I think this is it's a kind of good time to look at this because SQL is 50 years old this year. Um, the actual publication of it or announcement of it was earlier back back earlier this year probably should have held this session a few months ago um, but I was a bit distracted at other priorities at the time so yeah in 1974 um, Don Chamberlain and Raymond Boyce wrote the original paper about SQL I noticed at the time they wrote the paper it was actually called SQL S-E-Q-U-E-L structured English query language copyright reasons or trademark reasons or whatever, they had to rename it. Um, something else already was called SQL. So they shortened it, so they abbreviated it down to just SQL. So that was what started all everything off. So with such a milestone, I think it's good to kind of celebrate or uh, commemorate this, uh, to think about calculating ages and finding birthdays using SQL. Let's think about how we can do this um, and see when people are going to be turning a year older and how old they're going to be, that kind of thing. At this point, you might be going, oh, okay, well, that, that seems pretty easy, right? You know, what I'm going to talk for a whole hour about, about this, right? You know, it's just the day of the month of the birth, right? Well, at first glance, it seems really relatively straightforward. There are a few things to watch out for, but most notably, we got to think about people born on February the 29th, or leaplings, as they're occasionally called. Um, that complicates things quite a bit, because, of course, if it's not a leap year and you're born on February the 29th, which day do you celebrate? And how do we write the sequel to actually handle this? So there's you know, lots of interesting questions here. So if you are a leapling, if you were born on February the 29th, and you've got some interesting stories about how systems have failed to calculate your birthday or your age correctly uh, i'd love to hear them please put them in the comments and um so we can kind of all kind of <laughs> say celebrate commiserate whatever i don't know um see all the kind of horrible uh, things that have gone on because it's one of those things that's easy to overlook if it doesn't affect you directly so hi everyone i'm chris saxon I'm part of Gerald Ventil's app dev team here in Oracle, and it's our job to help you get the best out of Oracle Database and hopefully have some fun whilst doing so. So as I said, today, what we're going to look at is how we can use SQL. Um, so we've got a table of people's table of people with their birth dates or table with dates in generally. And we want to figure out things like how old people are today, um, when their birthday is, you know, is are they celebrating a birthday today? Are they celebrating a birthday in the upcoming week or the upcoming month? And so on. So we'll dive into all these questions as we go through the session. Let's start off with, we will look at calculating ages. So your age is generally how many complete years you've been alive. So from the year of your birth to the day and month, um, and then how many total years that is. Obviously, bearing in mind, as I said, Leaplings complicating things somewhat. So I'm going to stray away from the slides mostly today and do this mostly as a kind of live demo. So we can see we've got our table of people with various birth dates. We've got um, our sequel paper, 1st of May 1974 is when I believe it was published. So 50 years ago, some people born in 2000 and um, various other dates. So the question is, how old are these people? You know, what is their age today? Now, um, before we kind of get into that, one, I'm, I'm going to be basing a lot of these calculations on sysdate. So that is the date and time of the database server. So it returns now. OK, um, obviously, that is going to make things a little bit tricky for testing because we might want to check, you know, we want to check um, how old someone's going to be next week, last week what happens at the end of February, and so on and so forth. Now, one way we could get around that is to kind of um, make this a variable, you know, bind variable, so we can pass in which day we're searching for, or MVL it with sysdate or something like that. Or um, to keep things simple, I just wanted to stick with sysdate. There is actually a neat little parameter some, that's been around for a very, very long time. I don't know when it was first added. Um, that allows you to manipulate the value of sysdate. So if we look at sysdate, we can see it's the 15th of October. Um, it says 15, 13, just after 1300, because that's one o'clock UTC. Okay, so the server's in UTC. We can set the fixed date 
to a date, well, fix it to a particular date. So the end of February, 2023, for example. When we do that, we can see that this date is now that value. So this is really useful for testing anything actually that you want to do based on based upon sys state. You know, there's lots of um, jobs or routines where you're checking for things that are happened before or after sys state, before or after now. It's a nice little way to be able to do it. Now, this does only affect sys date. You know, see, I've um, gotten sys timestamp as well. So sys date is the 28th of February. Sys timestamp is still the 15th of October. So it only affects sys date. Um, so keep that in mind. If you've got stuff using sys timestamp, uh, you, you need to think of a different approach. To undo that and get it back to um, whatever now is, you just set fixed date back to none. So we can do that and we can see sys date is now, now again. It's now, now, all right. Um, so I'm gonna use this a lot in this session just to kind of change what date we're working with so we can see what's gonna happen in the past and the future and that kind of thing. All right, so let's get back to it. Let's look at how we can calculate how old someone is. So one basic formula we can use is look at how many months you've been alive, divide that by 12, there's 12 months in a year, and round that down, right? Um, so that's a kind of basic formula, formula, formula we could use here. And fortunately, Oracle Database has a nice little months between function to enable us to do this. Now, um, before we go a bit further, I'm running this on my um, always free autonomous 23 AI um, database. So you'll notice, you might notice some things which are a bit different, all right? You might, how does this work? Like I've got select without a from. There's lots of little things, improvements in 23 AI. So if you're not sure, if I'm, that doesn't look right. How does that work? It's because I'm using the um, latest version of the database. Anyway, so we can just select this. I don't need from dual anymore. And we can find how many months there are between two particular dates. So I'm looking at you know, it's 15th of October today, compare it to 15th of October last year, and look one day before and after. So if um, we're on the same date, same day of the month, so the 15th of October 2024 to the 15th of October 2023, that's 12 months. So the result is an integer. So it's always a whole number of um, a whole number, right? If we look at going forward a day forward and back, this nice big fraction here, you're like, well, what is that value? Database uses a fixed 31 day month. So it doesn't matter which date, um, how many days there are in the months that we're comparing, this fraction is always calculated as a 31 day month. Okay. And if we're on the same day, it's always a whole number, um, an integer that it returns. All right, so that seems promising so far. What happens at the end of the month? So we're on the last day of the month. So let's just compare the end of October to the end of September. Let's go back a month. So the 29th to the 30th, that's you know um, a month minus a day. The 30th to a 30th, sounds like a month. They're the same day of the month. Um, so that's probably a month. But what about this? The 31st of October to the 30th of September. They are both the last day of the month. And what's gonna happen here? And let's run this and see. So you can see we are just under a month for the 29th, uh, the 30th of September to the 29th of October, but both um, the 30th and the 31st are apparently exactly a month from the end of September. That's interesting, right? Um, so this, this is exactly how months between worked. It's as described, it's all in the documentation about how this works if they have the same day of the month or they are both the last day in the month, the result is always going to be an integer, a complete number of months, okay? So it's something to be aware of there. So that's okay, all right, fair enough. What happens now if both of these are February, right? Or we're looking at dates at the end of February here. So these are these leaplings which are gonna, you know, make some of these calculations, some of the SQL a bit um, more complicated. So let's compare. So 2024, we are in a leap year. So we had a February the 29th. Um, in 20, last year wasn't a leap year. So the 28th of February was the last day. So this, you know, we're going one day before the 27th to the 28th, 27th, February 24, um, 
from the 28th of February 23, the same day, the both the last day of the month, and then look forward to day in March. So before I run this, have a little think about what you think was going to happen here, and then then let's run it, and or what would you like to happen here? Um, and then we'll run it and find out. So these are, you know, both the last day, both the same day, so they should give a whole number, right? And these are both the last day in the month as well, so they probably give a whole number too, right? Well, let's just check, and voila, indeed, that is exactly what happens. These both give the same day of the month. They, they consider this 12 complete months, exactly one year, according to months between, okay? So that's, you know, we're going from a non-leap year to a leap year. What happens if we go the other way? Um, we're going, so let us say, leap, 2024 is a leap year, so we've got the 29th of February. Next year, next February, there is no 29th. So what's going to happen here? Right, well, clearly these are different days, so hopefully it won't be a whole number of months. Um, but what about, what about the, you know, 29th to the 28th, right? When we run that, because these are both the last day in the month, months between considers that exactly 12 months, okay? And we go to the um, 1st of March, then um, we consider we're a month and a day. So what does that mean? Well, that means if we're going to use months between, we are considering if you were born on the 29th of February and it is not a late leap year, if we use this logic, then we're saying you're celebrating, you are one year older on the 28th of February, okay? And it's like, is that what we want here, right? Now, this is this is where things start to get quite interesting because, of course, um, countries have a legal definition of when you, when you turn one year older. Here in the UK, where I live, if you were born on the 29th of February, in non-leap years, when it's not a leap year, you are officially one year older on the 1st of March. There are other countries which say that you are officially one year older on the 28th of February when it's not a leap year, right? So this works in um, some places, but not everywhere, not here in the UK. So what can we do here? Um, I see, you know, someone's got your, got your hand up. Whoever's got their hand up, if you've got a question, just put it in the Q&A and I'll pick it up, uh, you know, keeping half an eye on it as we go along. So like I say, just put your questions in the Q&A and I'll um, review them when I get a second. Okay. So, so this works if we want to say you're a year older at the end of February, those leap things. But what if we want to say that you're a year older at the, uh, on the start of March, the 1st of March here? Yeah. Okay, well, there is a little trick we can use. We can convert the dates into numbers in this in year, month, day format. Okay, now normally people lose their minds when you try and convert, do anything with dates other than man manipulate them as dates. This is one case where it can actually be useful to use them as numbers. So what that means is whole years are 10,000 units apart, 10,000 values apart. Okay, so to show an example here. We've converted the 28th of February, 20, uh, 28th of February last year, 2023, to um, and compare that to the 29th of February in the year 2000. Um, so we're, they're about 23 years apart, but are they exactly um, 23 years apart? So let's see. So the 28th and the of February and the 1st of March. So because we're subtracting these values, we've got them as new numbers. For if there are whole um, whole numbers of years apart, they will be multiples of 10,000. So we can see this uh, the minus this is just under 23,000, uh, no, 230,000. There we go, get my numbers correct here. Um, whereas the difference to March is just over 230,000. So we can take the result of this, divide it by 10,000 and round it down. And then we can say, oh, okay, our leaplings are celebrating on the 1st of March, okay. So um, converting uh, dates to numbers like that, you've got to do a bit of a, you know, go through several hoops here. So I'm just going to create a little function to do this. So we'll just reference this rather than this, all this two number two chart stuff. 
So we'll do the same um, calculations we had before um, with months between, but using our converting our dates to um, years and month, months and days like this. So we can see um, today compared to um, the 15th of October last year compared to yesterday, today, and tomorrow, we can see that's a year apart. So the 14th is 9999, just under 10,000. So that's less than a year. 15th to the 15th is exactly 10,000, exactly a year. And then to tomorrow the 16th, that is over 10,000. Okay, so divide this by 10,000, we'll get the number of years and round, and round it down. Um, let's look at, um, just see what happens when we're comparing month to month. Now, this isn't something we would need to do for birthdays, but you might need to do for other types of calculations, right? So we're comparing end of October to end of September. Now here, months are 100 apart, okay? Because you can see it's in the 100 position. So units, tens, hundreds. Days are tens, um, months are thousands and hundreds. So we can see we're going in multiples of 100 that are months apart. And if we are at the end, they're both the end of the month, they're no longer exactly a month apart, which again, depending on your definition, might be the right thing, might be the wrong thing. Okay, and if we look at the end of February. So if we go from last year, end of February last year, not a leap year, it's the end of February this year, which is a leap year, we can see how those are handled. So again, 28th to the 28th um, is exactly a year apart. According to this, they are 10,000. Go to the 29th, that's just a year and one day. Let's throw in what happens if we're kind of going from a leap year to a non-leap year. So end of February this year, um, 2024, to the end of February in 2025. When we convert these to numbers, this is gonna be just less than that in terms of years. So we can see that is 99999. Divide that by 10,000, round it down, that's gonna be zero, zero years old, okay? So um, we've got, so we can now use this approach um, as a way, as a different way of calculating how old you are going to be on today, how old you are today. So we can see we've got our two approaches, take our whole number of months um, or use our months between and divide it by 12 or convert the dates to um, these YYYYMMDD formats as numbers and divide by 10,000. And if we look and then can run in SQL, that looks a bit like this. So we can do that. And we say today is 15th of October. Um, we've got, our, this person has got their birthday today and they're born in 2016, um, it's 2024, they're eight years old. That checks out. The person who's born on the 16th of October, it's their birthday tomorrow, they're not eight yet, so they are seven. And we can see these people born in 2000 are 24 and so on. So um, this is working. So let's, uh, we've got our simple case looks okay. Let's handle our more complicated case, our leaplings, people born on the 29th of February. So um, let's, let's see what happens for people. Uh, if we set it to a non-leap year, so the end of February um, last year, which was not a leap year, and see what happens here. And we just pull out the people with birthdays in February. And we can see if we go, uh, so this is end of February, end of February. So person two, they're going to be a whole year older. Our leapling born on the 29th. This is where it gets interesting. Um, the months between considers them to be one year older on the 29th of February. Whereas the numeric format, our floor, does not. Okay, so notice there is a little difference here, which is right. It depends, right? Um, like I say, a lot of places in the world um, will consider you one year older on the 1st of March. There are some countries, New Zealand, I'm led to believe, considers leaplings one year older on the 28th of February. If anyone can confirm or deny that officially, you know, if you live in New Zealand and you're a leapling that lives in New Zealand um, and confirm or deny that, um, let me know. Um, so this might seem like a little tiny technical difference, but of course, if the services you are providing are age restricted in any way, or you have to be a certain age to access them, then um, you potentially could run into trouble here. If you're giving them access one day early, 
you could be running into legal trouble. If you're giving them um, one day late, at least as far as the leak wing is concerned, you might be upsetting some customers, all right? So you do need to check and understand exactly how this is supposed to work in whatever legal jurisdiction you actually work in and make sure you check and verify this. Of course, it is possible if you have a global or application that's used um, lots of places, you might need to support both of these. You might need to change between them based on where the people who are using it are actually located. Okay, that's going to make things a bit interesting later on, right? Okay, so we'll look at that too. Um, so we can see we've got our differences there. And let's see what happens if we just bump this on. So people born on the 1st of March, um, let's just make that update that to the 1st of March. And we can see they are now all 23. So from 2000 to the year 2023, they're all 23. That's correct. Let's check what happens at the end of February um, in a leap year. So it's 29th, make sure that looks right. You can see these values all match up. So people, if um, the leaplings are only a year older on their birthday, not the day before or the day after. Okay, so ah, looking good. All right. Um, you say, if you've got any questions or comments on this, um, please put them in the chat to the person who keeps putting their hand up. Um, they say put them in chat and um we'll i'll pick them up and address them as we go along okay so we found how old they are now but like i say you might provide some kind of services which you need to be um some minimum age for you know there's fairly obvious things like you know gambling or buying alcohol and things like that but there's also you know a lot of various other financial services quite a lot of places you have to be some minimum age to open a bank account. You have to be, um, if you want to collect your um, social security, your pension, generally you have to be over a certain age. There's actually quite a lot of things where you have to be at least a certain age to actually be able to claim them. So you might need to verify this in your application in various ways. So we might need to, rather than check what age you are today, is kind of flip that around and say, um, we need to know everyone, are here's our minimum age, are you older than that? And how we can do that is just take whichever formula we're using here to calculate age, leapling formula, and stick it in our where clause, all right? Or we could wrap this in a um, subquery or something like that, and just check they are greater than whatever our minimum age is. So if I run that, so we're gonna say, are they at least 23? Find me everyone who's at least 23, um, and we can see we've got our people there and what were we on we're on the 29th of february let me just let's put that back to the first of march uh no let's put it back to the end of february that's losing track of what i was going to do here right um remember got to remember my own demo here okay let's run this again we're at the end of february 2023 how old is who are the people who are um 23 years old and we can see because we're using the leaplings are only one year older on the first of march definition um the person born on the 29th of February 2000 is not included. They are not considered to be at least 23 for the purposes of um, our calculations here. So, you know, like I say, you, you, this is one way of approaching it. You could say, find me everyone who is at least a certain age. Um, you might want to see everyone and have like a flag and say, are they old enough to do whatever it is um, or check them? Another way to do that is to use a case expression. So we can stick that in a case expression and like that. And you might notice here, I've got um, true and false. I'm returning true and false. As of 23 AI, Boolean is a native data type in SQL. So we can have Boolean values directly in SQL, true and false and Boolean expressions. So again, I'm using um, the 1st of uh, March uh, to say these leap things are a year older. And we can see, let's just bring that up and say, so we can see our person born on the 29th of February. It is the 28th of February, 23. Um, they are not 23 years old yet, or they haven't passed our minimum age threshold that we're gonna use here. So like I say, we could just filter and check, are they old enough? Or you know, maybe this is an app which supports people of all ages, but only certain parts of it, you need to um, be a certain age to actually access or use the services for, or use particular services. So we've got either way of doing it. Alrighty then, I've talked a lot quite there. Any questions or comments before we move on and kind of just recap that a little bit briefly. 
So let me just check, reset the fixed date back to none. Okay. Not seeing anything coming in at the moment. Um, so just to kind of recap that. We've got to be, the big thing with these age calculations is you've got to be very careful what happens at the end of February for people born on the 29th of February if it is not a leap year. Okay, so we can say there's two ways we can do it. We can say um, you are one year older at the end of February, regardless, you're always one year older at the end of February, or if it's not a leap year, you are one year older at the start of March, the 1st of March. Again, you know, depending on what kind of services you provide, if it's just like a social media thing, it might not matter. Um, you know, some some of your leaplings will probably be like, you're celebrating my birthday one day early or one day late. They might annoy some of your annoy slash amuse some of your customers. Um, but they're you know, that might be the extent of it. But for other things for actual age restricted content, then um potentially you're actually opening yourself up to kind of legal issues if you're giving people access one day too soon. Okay. So do check and make sure you it's working how you want it to. As we saw, to calculate the months, total months, we just divide the number of months you've been alive by 12 and round that down. That gives the complete number of years. Alternatively, if you want to celebrate on the 31st of March, um, you know, convert the dates today or the day you're calculating into years, and month, years, months, and days, numbers. Subtract their year, month, and day of birth as numbers, divide by 10,000, and round that down again to get the number of 10,000s, multiples of 10,000s, hence years you've been alive. And then, like I say, with leaplings, depending on when you you they need to celebrate, depends on which of these formulas you use. Um, there are other ways of doing this as well. These are just two that I've picked. There's some other approaches which give the same effect. But the key thing here is make sure you check what happens at the end of February for these leaplings and what goes on there. And there was the sequel that we had there as well. Oh, okay. Oh, everyone's been, been really quiet today. So as maybe I'm saying like end of February leapling too much. I don't know. Um, so, so those are our methods to find how old people are. Um, and also we can do things like check, are they old enough? Or of course we could invert that as well. There are some things where only available to people up to a certain age. If you are, you know, child bank accounts, once you are over 18 in the UK, um, you no longer qualify for certain kind of like child type accounts and things like that. All right then, so we've looked at ages. Let's, let's look at a different way. Um, let's look at first days, right? Let's see when, when people are going to be a year older. Um, so what we're looking here is not necessarily how old they are, probably interested in that, um, but we want to know, are they celebrating? Okay, who is celebrating a birthday today? And also more generally, who's got a birthday coming up soon, the next week or the next month or something like that. So let's look at how we can actually do some things like this. All right, so start off with finding birthdays. Um, so simple, basic approach we can do. And I say, I'm, I'm going to ignore leaplings for now. We'll um, walk through the process, figure it out, and then add in the complications later. So start with the easy case and then layer it up and make it tricky as things go on. So we just want to compare, is the day and month of their birth match the current day and month and um, we run that and we can see today's the 15th of october so we got the person with birthday on the 15th of october so that gives us people born today or celebrating birthday today what if we want to celebrate in the next month or the next seven days or something like that well i'm going to start with celebrating the next seven days one way we can do that is to generate the next seven days right and say are they in this list of values here so we can do this to get our next seven, get seven values. Now, again, this is something where you need to be a little bit careful. I've said next seven days. What does that mean? Does that mean um, seven days starting tomorrow? Does that mean today and the seven days after today? Or does it mean today and the next six days? So we get seven days total. You know, be careful here. Again, think, speak with whoever wants this query and say, well, what do you mean by the next seven days? You know, there's an argument um, me and my wife always have is like, um, 
if something is next, so today is Tuesday, if something's happening um, next Thursday, does that mean in two days time, the Thursday that is coming next? Or is that this Thursday? And next Thursday is a week on Thursday, Thursday next week, which is it? What do we mean here? For the purposes of this, I'm assuming the next, when we say the next N, whatever that is, I mean today, and then plus however many rows make up N. So seven days is today plus six, giving us seven rows in total, not the seven days from tomorrow, okay? That might be different for your use case. That will check you. There's all, all sorts of opportunities for off by one errors and things like that um, without this. So you can see we're converting it to day and month format. So we can do that and very similar to what we had before. Let's check, just check whether they are in that list and we can see got someone celebrating tomorrow. Okay, so now let's look at people celebrating in the next calendar month. So we can do this using add months. So this say take today and add once with it, one month to it, take off today to get the number of days between them. So this will generate us from today up until the 14th of November. And then compare that date to the birth date, day and month, and we'll get the people born. So we get person born on the 14th of November as well. So again, this is something we've got add months. We need to be a bit careful about what do we mean by within a month, right? Seven number of days is easy. Number of days is a fixed unit of time. Months are not a fixed unit of time. Um, what does it mean to add a month? Okay. So add months works a, kind of similarly to um, months between. So if we add a month to the first of the month, um, you get the first of the next month. So you go to the same day. But if you add a month to the last day, you get the last day of the next month, whichever way you are going. So we can see we've got three calculations here and they are all a different number of days. Oh, that's all good fun. Like date time values are always in pain, right? It doesn't matter what you're doing, they're always a fiddle. So we run this. So the 1st of January goes to the 1st of February. 31st of January goes to the 29th of February. We're in a leap year. And the 31st of March goes to the 30th of April. So 31 days, 29 days, and 30 days. Okay. What do you mean? What does it mean to add a month? Okay. You need to, again, you need to speak to whoever's asking for this query on this report. What happens here? What should happen? What's the right answer? It depends. Okay. There isn't a fixed answer. We'll just kind of prove that we're adding different things. We get the same values here. 1st of February, 29th of February, 30th of April. If we add different values here. So you need to be careful and think about what it is you're actually looking for here. All right. So um, what was I doing? So finding people in the next calendar months. So we this works for our base case, but what about our leaplings, right? What about people born on the 29th of February? So we go to the 1st of February. So this should include um, everyone up to the end of February. So we got the person born on the 28th of February. Um, we haven't got our leapling born on the 29th. Let's look at the 2nd of February. Let's try that. Let's bring them in. Um, we got the 28th of February and the 1st of March, but our, our leaplings disappeared, right? A person born on the 29th of February, what happens to them? They've just gone. They vanished, right? Well, what's, what, what gives? What's happened? Well, it's not a leap year. It's 2023. And so if we look at this big list of values we've generated here, 29th of February just literally doesn't exist, okay? It's not in this list here. Hmm. We've gone straight from 29th to the 1st, uh, so we can't see if they're in this. Oh. Hmm. Okay. So we need to think about these things. We need to have a test specifically for the 29th of February when it is not a leap year, okay? So in order to do that, I've got this lovely, you know, checking if it's a light year is a bit fiddly. It's divisible by four and 400, but not 100. So I've got that lovely function to do this. Again, returning it as a Boolean. So we can call that in SQL now. Um, so let's go to the 1st of March, yes. Um, so what we're doing here is match day and month of birth. That's fine. But if, they, if you are a leapling, you're born on the 29th of February, and it is not a leap year, then we need to check the current date is the 1st of March or the 29th of February as appropriate, you know, depending on when you want them to celebrate. So we've set it to the 1st of March. So now hopefully, yeah, there we go. We've got our leap link. Okay. So check and verify and test this carefully. 
one tiny thing to be aware of. I've used this day, day month format, um, and that's to make things a bit easier to see what's going on here. Spelling out the month in user interfaces is so much better than just like month and day, because it's a bit cryptic. If I have 0103, is that the 1st of March or the 3rd of January? Mm. Depends. If you live in America, you mean that, that means something to different to where the rest of us live, right? Um, I find it very useful, and certainly for the demo, it's very useful to kind of show, spell the month, because then it's clear we're talking about that particular month. Um, but as I said, this is then NLS uh, sensitive, okay? Let's change our language to French, um, and we'll see it gives a slightly different value. First of Mars, right? They have a different format there. To make this NLS safe, you can pass in this NLS date language um, parameter. Um, technically, theoretically, I should have done it in this demo. I didn't just, like I say, these are already getting complicated. Just trying to keep things simple um, and visible and understandable. Really, I should have done that or used a uh, format that is NLS independent, such as just um, DDMM or MMDD, whichever way around you work. Let's just set things back to English. So just something to be aware of there, particularly those of you who um, don't work, who work in non-English speaking um, countries by default, right? I've got your databases set up for that. Okay, so we found the Leaplings celebrate today. Let's find them in the next N days. We've got the 22nd of February. Um, so we will find them in the next seven days. So we've got seven days. That takes us up to the 28th of February. We want to then add in union or I think we'll do that, um, value 28th of February, right? If it is not a leap year and the 29th, of February the 29th is between the start and end date of our range. So again, this is something we've got to be careful with our off by one errors here um, because, uh, you know, I want them to celebrate. I always, I always get mixed up here. I have to think about this very, very carefully. Um, we want them to celebrate on the end of February. Um, so we have to include the 1st of March, right? So we want one day extra in effect compared to if they celebrate on the 1st of March, because then the 29th is between um, the end of February and the 1st of March. Run that, check the next seven days, and we can see we pulled in the person on the 28th, 29th of March. If we want them to celebrate on the 1st of March, instead we have to subtract one here. Okay, we'll test that out and check, uh, make sure they're not returned here. Like I say, it, you, you have to think about this very careful. Think about how you're off by one errors and things are going to work or handled. Very easy to make a mistake. I made loads of these putting this demo together. It took me a long time. Um, and I hope to make sure I got this 100% accurate every single time. So make sure you check and test that thoroughly. Now, at this point, you're going, OK, well, I use this between thing. I would, um, before I was to check the next um, N days, I generated N rows and checked it was in that. But I got this between thing here to check if that is within our date range. Um, why, why did I do that? Why, why didn't I use this between thing before, right? Why didn't I just do that before? Well, there is a major, major problem with between, and that's when it comes to the year end, right? Let's set the date to the end of December, okay? So um, our, if we've got someone born on the 1st of January and MMMD 0101, the current date is 1231 in MMDD format. Oh. So we have here a situation where our um, start is before the end, which is automatically false, right? They are not between those values. So we can't use this at the year end when we're spanning a year. OK, um, those of you who are a bit super observant and paying attention will notice this is also a problem up here if this date range is two months or more. So we're going from the end of January, uh, December, potentially past the end of February. I'm assuming that's fairly unlikely. Um, and if it is possible, is like I say, that's a, a homework for you, something you need to solve, right? And figure out for yourself. Um, and use that to actually handle this. Um, so think and test these and check these carefully. But you could use between generally, but then the logic also gets even more complicated and fiddly. Okay, whichever way you do it, it's a bit of a faff. 
Okay, I see some com comments. We should just not hire leaplings. It's not just hiring them. This is like your customers as well, potentially, if you're doing any kind of birthday celebration for them. You know, like say, if you need to know how old they are to provide their services or something like that. Um, yeah, I don't think your leaplings would be too happy about that. Sorry to all of you leaplings out there. Like say, if you, I'm sure some of you have got horror stories where um, systems have completely failed to um, calculate your age or your birthday correctly. But if you've got them, I'd love to hear them. Um, another question, is it possible to set fixed date only for a session? No, okay, Sys date, it, setting fixed date is system wide, unfortunately. Um, otherwise, because that would be super handy, wouldn't it? If you could just set it in a session. No, it is a system level setting, sadly. Um, okay, and yeah, again, people who got your hands up, type your comments, put them in the QA. All right, um, I will address that, I'll address those. Okay, so let's put that back to now, let's move on. Right, let's just recap what we've done here. All right, so if we want to find someone with a birthday within 20, uh, end days of the 26th of February, we're close to the end of February, and they are a leapling. So the first thing we do is convert their birthday and month, that birthday just extract the day and month in some format. And we can generate the next end days. So this is four or five days, depending on whether or not it's a leap year, and check it is that. So notice I've kind of highlighted February the 29th, because it is not a leap year, and only if it's not a leap year, we need to inject this February the 29th value in, okay? So I've done that by generating the values and then unioning all this value specifically if it hits these criteria. When do I do that? Well, like I say, check it's not a leap year. We've got a lovely like complicated formula to do that here. <laughs> and it makes your head hurt. And then we're checking if the 0229 is in the date range. So we're converting our start and end dates to um, DD, uh, MMDD format and checking they are between. Um, and notice if we want to say they celebrate within in February, we want one day extra compared to if Leaplings are celebrating at the start of March. Okay. Um, so some examples, three days from the 26th. So 26th, 27th, 28th of February in non-leap years. That would run to the 1st of March. That would include 2029. They're celebrating on the 1st of March. Well, we don't want to, 0301 to be in there. That's, we, you know, um, that value minus one. So these these off by one errors are all, all over the place when it comes to these calculations. Test and verify and check super, super thoroughly. Okay. All right. Um, any other uh, questions or comments? We should take a loan on 29th of February. There will be chance you <laughs> chance you know, right? Yeah, a chance they miscalculate and then you don't have to pay for something. Well, I mean, it could work the other way as well. They might um, accidentally triple or quadruple calculate or something as well. Um, but yeah, <laughs> these things happen. There was a problem earlier this year. There was a system, I forget where it was. Some system didn't work on the 29th of February this year. It, you know, this isn't like a th hypothetical problem, which you know, um, only happens every now and again, this, this does, this is still affect real systems today. And just in case you're interested, I, I was asking chat, um, GPT about how these stuff work, just to see what it said. It failed completely many, many times to give me the answer on these as well. So don't, don't think you can just pass it to an LLM and it's going to fix it for you either. You need to check this quite carefully, this stuff. All right, then. Um, okay, so birthdays. So we just want today, we just need to match day and month. For the next end days, we need to, we can generate the end, those days and check those dates in day month format are in that list. However, when we um, have leaplings, we can inject in the values there. Okay, someone's put a really complicated formula in, which I'm gonna have to look at very, very carefully to figure out um, whether it works. Maybe it does work. But, um, uh, okay, why can't we just do that formula? Um, it's taking the date, day and month and adding on the year. So that works for today, kind of, but it doesn't work for the end of the year, right? If it's the end of December and you want to find the next end day, next uh, seven days or whatever, you can't just append on the current year because you'll go from the end of December 2024 to the start of January 2024, right? So it works if you're just calculating today, but if you want to calculate end days in the future or in the past, you can't just append in the year 
because you'll end up with a start and end of the same year. You've got to have more complicated logic to flip which year it is, depending on where in the year you are. Ah, ah, this all makes my head hurt, right? Um, so like I say, be careful with this stuff. There's traps all over the place. So at this point, he's like, well, can't we make it? Isn't there an easier way? Can we simplify this a bit? Well, one way is to make it data driven, store it in some tables. All right. So what do I mean by that? Let's look at this. Let's look at this. So let's make it data driven. So one thing, a simple thing we could do, let's just add an age column to our person table, right? Add our age column and I have a um, function to set it. So we've updated everything and we've got, if we get the thing up, if we get the query results, we've got everyone's age. Nice simple query, just select the column. What could be easier? Well, this notice, I mean, we, you know, we need to think about which formula we're using here, but also it's based on sysdate. We're going to have to run this update every single day to change the age of everyone who's born, or, you know, celebrates their birthday today. Okay. So we need a daily job to run. Um, so this means um, there is. You know, hopefully the job will run fairly quickly. You know, um, depends on how many users you've got, right? Even with several thousands or millions, hopefully the update should run in a few seconds. Whatever, that means there is a brief period of time where that age is incorrect, right? Is this a problem? I don't know, right? Um, it might be one of those things where it's not an issue because you set their age and you run some reports afterwards, everything's fine. If it's like a customer facing transactional system, there will be a brief time after midnight when people are, some people are slightly too young. Is that a problem? Maybe, right? Again, it might be one of those things that is like a bug, a bug that comes up every now and again. Someone working at just after midnight goes, my age is wrong um, or things like that. Um, and you kind of go, no one can figure out what's going on. Um, or it might be quite a significant problem if you're doing actual calculate, you're relying on this age for complex logic. Um, and of course, there is the problem as well that the job might fail. It might not run for some reason. 99 point whatever percent of the time it will work, but that 0.01% .0 of the time it does fail or is delayed or whatever, suddenly every all hell breaks loose because you've got everyone's age is slightly incorrect. So for simple use cases, this can work quite well, but you know, if you need to, if, you need to be careful, right? Think about what happens in that period before, um, from midnight until you've finished updating everyone's age. What happens there? What if that goes wrong? What if it fails? What are you going to do? So one way around this is to just create a view, right? We could put that logic in a view, use sysdate, and because it's sysdate in the view like that, we can just select it. And because this is now a calculated value based on sysdate, it's always correct. Hmm, okay. I mean, this, this could be work. Again, for simple use cases, this might be good enough, right? You know, if we want to set the... However, there are some interesting things to be aware of. Let's set back to the start of 2000s, right? Way back in time. Um, you could get some interesting results here if we recalculate their ages. Notice... There's a whole bunch of people who weren't born in 2000s and now are negative ages. <laughs> okay, that's kind of interesting. Maybe problematic. I don't know. Is that a problem? I don't know. Maybe. Um, so, yeah, we might need to think about that. Um, the other thing is we might want to calculate how what age they are in the future, not just what age they are today, what age were they on the past, what age are they next week, that kind of thing. Um, now, one way we could do that, you can't pass parameters to views, but we could create a macro. It talks about macros a lot. If you want to know what they are, check out some of my previous Aston things. Um, so we can pass in which date we are interested in. Okay. So we can say, how old are they on this date? Oh, this is how old everyone is, 50, 24, and so on. Uh, how old were they on at the start of 2000? Everyone's negative date. So again, um, if you need to parameterize it, calculate forward or past date ages, this could be quite useful, right? Um, so this is uh, um, looks like it could be viable. We could have a column. We've got to think carefully about making sure we keep that updated and what happens if for some reason that update fails. Um, or we could just create a view or a SQL macro to allow us to know exactly how old they are on a particular date. But um, 
there are some still some challenges here. And you say, we've only got one celebration date for Leaplings. You know, I've said our Leaplings are celebrating on the 1st of March. If you build an application which needs to support both 28th of February and the 1st of March for Leaplings, um, the, the logic's getting a bit complicated. The other thing is, this is how old they are on a specific day, you know, 31st of December 2000. What if we want to find the upcoming birthdays? How old will they be? Who's going to have a birthday and how old will they be? Hmm. Okay. Well, at this point, you might go, well, why don't we just take this? Why don't we just do what we have here and make this a macro? And it's like, yeah, okay, maybe we could do that. We could wrap this logic in a macro as well to find our upcoming birthdays. However, this still has a bit of a challenge as well. Notice we got their birth date, but it's not sys date, right? It's not the actual current day, um, which again, for our people in born in October isn't really an issue. But for our leaplings born on the 29th of February, uh, you need to know which day their actual birthday is. 29th of February, 30th, 30th of March, which is it? Uh, um, we could have some logic to have a column to calculate that in our query here. So this is doable, this is possible. But at this point, to be honest, my brain had utterly melted. <laughs> right? um, I was like, you know, this is getting super complicated. Um, I, you know, maybe one day I can make this a macro. If, if any of you are feeling brave um, and want to create a macro version of this, which returns not the birth date, but the day they are celebrating their birthday and how old they are going to be and handle leaplings correctly, and potentially as also as well, allow us to switch between end of February and start of March. Please do um, write it up, send me, contact, get in touch with me and show me and I'll share that with the world. Um, but honestly, my brain was melted at this point. So there is another approach we could take and that's this, you know, this mantra of minimizing code, maximizing data, the store the values. What we want to know is on a particular um, day, how old is someone? So in order to do that, we need rows for each day, right? So how do we do that? We can create a table. So let's just drop the age column, just to keep things simple. Um, so we could table create a table which stores the cross join of birth dates and calendar dates. Okay, what dates they were born, what date it, we want to calculate that age for, um, store how old they are and whether or not it's the birthday and as well a flag to say our leaplings celebrating at the end of february or the start of march so we could have a table like this calendar dates our leapling celebrates is just say february or march and their birth date their age and we can see we've got a boolean 23 ai boolean column to say whether or not it's their birthday so let's create that um so that seems nice right but but how much data are we going to need here, right? Let's think about this. So the oldest people in the world are approaching 120 years old. Now, there's there's a lot of skepticism over how old they really are because those people were born back in like the um, 1920s and records are not what they are, were today, right? There's some skepticism over, over whether they really are that old and whether those are genuine birthdays. But anyway, um, let's assume they're 120 up to age range up to 120 years. We probably want to give ourselves a bit of padding and leeway because we'll need people born in the future as well. We need sort of birth dates for people not yet born. So we probably want to span a range of 130 years-ish, which is about 47,000 dates, okay? If we store the Cartesian product of calendar dates and birth dates, that's over 2 billion rows. Hmm. Um, and if we want to have a flag to celebrate, say whether they're celebrating in February or March, that's about 4 billion rows. We double everything up. Okay, this is not sounding good. This is sounding highly impractical, right? Does this table approach really work? Do we really want a 4 billion plus row table to do this? Well, well actually, let's think about this. Do we really need every combination? First up, we don't need calendar dates before they were born, right? We don't need to calculate someone's negative age. Well, I mean, maybe you do, but if, if you want to, let me know why. That's a bit of an interesting, crazy use case. And we also only need to store the calendar dates we want to calculate ages and find birthdays for. In most systems, that is probably a fairly narrow window. 
of maybe of a year, maybe two years, maybe three years, right? The recent past and the near future, okay? We probably don't need to calculate how old someone born in 1920 was in, in 1950, probably. If you do, um, you know, well, <laughs> you need to think about that carefully. But for most of us, we probably just need to know how old someone is going to be in the recent past or the near future. So we can only really need a rolling window of one, two, maybe three calendar years. So you can see I've populated this ages table with a rolling window of three years. So from the 1st of January, 2023, up to the 31st of December, 2025. For all those dates, store all the possible um, birth dates going back, you know, 120, whatever years it was. Um, so we can get some values like this. Um, and you can see we've got, so for someone born on the 2nd of January, 1970, on the 1st of January, 23, they were 52. It's not their birthday. Um, and we're using the Leaplings celebrate in February. And if we got the, you know, um, was a, those colors a bit, that blue's a bit harsh, isn't it? Anyway, um, so we can see um, whether they're born uh, celebrating uh, February or March. Now, of course, for most people, it's only these, um, we need both of these for Leaplings to switch between 29th, uh, 28th of February, 1st of March. Um, we could probably consolidate and rationalize this down a bit as well if we need to. So, um, so how does this help? Well, let's think about our queries now. Let's just set things back, reset our fact state. We can just join on birth date because this is a column in our ages table. Check the calendar date today and check, uh, um, and we can see if it's their birthday and they're celebrating. And we'll say they're people celebrating in February. And voila, we've got everyone celebrating today, their age and whether it's their birthday, right? Now, the nice thing about this is because ages is a table, if any of these age or birthday values is incorrect, you just run an update, right? We just run an update and fix the data. It's easy to verify and it's quite easy to fix as well if it's any corrupted. If we want to find people with birthday coming up in the next month, so birthday is a Boolean, so we can just check it's that true. Check the calendar date is in that range. Um, and again, check it, say February, so we can see 15th, 16th of October, and they're all gonna be turning eight. They're born in 2016. Um, if we look at the end of February, um, and we wanna say the leaplings, um, so are born in February, then we include that as they are leapling born in February for our non leap year. I'm getting confused. I don't know about you, but this is, you know, it's, it's still melting my brain, kind of trying to explain this all to you. I hope you're following me. If you're not, like I say, I will be publishing the blog post tomorrow to kind of consolidate and uh, capture this. If we want to say they're born in March, um, then they're not included. We said it's the 1st of February. There is a 29th of February in this year in 2024. Um, so they are included, whatever that is set to. So let's just check these, uh, think about these and say, let's say we want to find everyone who is older than a particular age. And let's say we've got these age restricted services. Oh, we just check the ages greater than this is the, the calendar date. Check if it's a leapling, find everyone who's at least uh, 24. Um, and we can see we've got these people pulled back like that. So the thing here is these queries become pretty straightforward. There's no complex logic. You just a join, just a where clause. And if it turns out any of these values are wrong, it's really easy to fix them by just running an update. Okay, you just have a maintenance screen somewhere. Okay, and just to double check our leaplings, make sure I've got those right. So we can see people born in February 29th, 2000, 28th of February, 2003, um, not a leap year. So the person celebrating in 20 at the end of February, it is their birthday. They will be 23. Person celebrating in March, it's not their birthday. They're still 22. On the 1st of March, they are both 23. One of them, you know, is celebrating or not. Um, so, you know, at this point, I'm curious to hear, I, I, what do you think of this? You know, as I say, the challenge, the nice thing about this is it does make your queries nice and easy to manage. And if you get something wrong, it's just data, you just update it. You don't need to worry about complex logic testing code. The downside is, as I said, this 
Aegis table could be colossal, depending on how big a date range you need to support. Probably only need, you know, maybe a year, a year, maybe a bit more. That will depend on your use case. If you need to support a truly big, you know, any point in past or future, anytime, anyone, you're going to have like a trillion row table of that's clearly not feasible. Um, you probably will have to actually use those fallot formulas and calculations. But what do you think? Let me know. Which do you prefer? Which do you think is a better approach? So just to recap, we can add a column each day, but it is only there each day. We could do things like views to make sure it's always in sync, or we can store people's age and whether it's their birthday on a particular calendar date by creating a table. So they say our age column is nice and simple, but it is limited, just their value, their age on a particular day. Age table, true, could be truly um, large, but as long as we can keep which calendar dates we need to calculate ages and birthdays for to some kind of fairly constrained, reasonable value, it's not too bad, right? And the key thing is we're always looking up just a small set of values from that. So the queries will still be efficient. And the queries are bas basically just joins and wares. No kind of this complex all then to date, blah, 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 worrying about all that complexity. Finish up, recap. Um, we can calculating ages and finding a birthdays with SQL. So age is how many complete years you are alive, right? Um, we can do the total months or we can do the dates as numbers. Whatever we do, we need to think carefully about handling our leaplings. Again, are you celebrating today? When are leaplings celebrating? When it's not a leap year? Oh, I don't know, right? Um, or we can make this data driven. We can have a column for today or a table to calculate any day. Uh, if you, so I uh, hope you enjoy this. Um, if you want to know more about learning SQL generally, you know, this is getting pretty complicated uh, having to think about. If you want to learn more about the basics of SQL over on DevGym, we've got our free databases for developers class, teach you how to create tables, write SQL queries, the real basics of getting started with SQL. We've got more advanced classes as well if you're looking for something more interesting and more powerful. So as a final reminder, if you want to test and understand uh, about your SQL knowledge, uh, SQL syntax knowledge, we've got Squizzle, guess a SQL statement, new one every day. Please check that out. And finally, um, just leave this up on the screen for a second, a little cheat sheet summarizing what I've talked about today. I see loads of hearts coming up. Thank you, folks. Um, that sounds like hopefully you were able to follow that. I think I almost lost the plot at some point. So hopefully you were able to follow that as well as um, I, I might just about managed to stick with it. Um, so to finish up, um, just want to say normally um, the next SQL Office Hours um, would be when I'm at DOAG. So I'm going to be in Nuremberg at DOAG. If any of you are going to be at that conference, please come up and say hello. Um, so obviously, I, I'm not going to be presenting, uh, holding our office hours. I'm going to move the next session to the 10th of December instead. And um, I'm going to make that one of my favorite sessions. The end of the year, the past couple of years, we've run a kind of like um, vote for your schema design, which you know had some choices. Do we want primaries, natural or surrogate keys, that kind of thing? We've had a debate and a vote and built the schema live. I'm going to do another one of those vote for your favorite schema things um, next month. So if you want to be involved in that, please join us live so you can have your say and take, take your vote and pick the actual schema for that. And with that, all that's left to say, as I say, really hope you enjoy this. More importantly, I hope you learned something and I will see you either in Nuremberg or on the 10th of December. Uh, goodbye, folks. See you next time.